So far away, Lucas, uh, you join me once again for an episode of Wiki Weekends, the uh, series where we delve into the uh, wiki page of a particular topic just to see what's going on. And uh, today we're talking about uh, a subject near and dear to our hearts, Yu-Gi-Oh. Whoa. So more specifically, we're talking about the character Joey Wheeler, and we're referring to the Yugi Wiki, a link to which you can find below. But before that, Lucas, what do you think of the character of Joey Wheeler from Yugi? Because he's my favourite, because his whole gimmick is, fuck it, look. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, is I respect his playstyle so much, but I also hate the character because he's like... Always the whiny, like, oh, Yugi, no. No, no, Lucas. He's not whi- He's not on the level of Taya. Oh, God. Of, hey, God, let's Just... draw a thimble on our hands. This is why I need more female friends. Show no mercy, Rebecca. Including Yugi. Like, that entire, like, Yugi side of the cast, apart from maybe Yami Yugi, are just like such annoying whiny jobbers. Like <laughs> they are like it's it's more, it might be the most unlikable cast of protagonists in a show <laughs> that I fucking love. <laughs> so for people who maybe aren't familiar with uh, Joey Wheeler, we have here the intro on the wiki page. Joseph Joey Wheeler, um, also known as in the Japanese version, like the original um, Katsuya Jonuchi. Okay. Um, in the manga and Japanese version, he's one of the main characters in Yu-Gi-Oh. He's best friends with Yugi Moto. He starts out as an inexperienced duelist. No, you should say he's a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. <laughs> You're a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. And the thing uh. is, it's like obviously the um, it's quite well known at this point that the original concept for like Yu-Gi-Oh was that Yugi would be the king of games and they'd like each arc go into a yeah, new, game, new game but they are all so inexperienced in that They're card so game. so bad at dueling yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Yugi's like king of games and it's like and then his first episode a trap card with this card ah, a magic card exactly what's that yeah like he doesn't know and then the, the, the explanation there is well the audience is learning about the game in the series but mm-hmm. well, Yugi should have knowledge of how it works. Mm-hmm. Like, never forget that Yugi in the series, without knowing what a magic card is, beats the guy who owns, <laughs> like, a Kyber Corp, who's obsessed with playing Yugi. Yeah. He's obsessed uh, with dual monsters and he beats. Like, he beats Pegasus, who has an entire deck that was made just for him. And also has the ability to, like, read your moves. Yeah. Knows all your moves. But then he says that uh, Joey later became one of the greatest duelists in the world. And I just love that he becomes the greatest duelist through uh, sheer dumb luck because his mm-hmm. entire play style revolves around luck. And you can't. You time can't, you can't wizard! <laughs> it's like fucking time wizard, man. Well, see, he might be one of the smartest characters in the series. He's like, well, Yu Gi Oh! We all know it's like in our world, it's broken as fuck. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why there's a great breakdown of like why why is Yu-Gi-Oh so broken? But things like Magic, for example, which mm. has thousands more cards, is okay. So well, every couple of years in Magic, they say fuck it, all the cards are done, new series, because if we keep making new cards and keep introducing power creep, eventually like it'll just be an unholy abomination called Yu-Gi-Oh. You can't possibly stand against my three blue eyes white dragons. It's over, Yu-Gi. Because they've never, ever, like, discontinued any card in Yu-Gi-Oh! So you can have cards from the very first, like, release working with cards, like, later on. Like, let's not forget that, you know, when it started, it would be like, Ah, yes, my signature card, Celtic Guardian, with, like, 1,200 attack and 1,400 defense, and that's considered a good thing, and it had no effect. Yeah. That's the thing, like, people, like modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is an absolute nightmare. Mm-hmm. But I love, though, that the more complex and more specific and more, like, ultra-detailed all of, like, um, uh, the cards and the effects have gotten means that early cards, uh, some early cards, not all of them, are still really good because their effects are so broad. And there's a friend of ours who explained it to me. Of, like, there's a card, I think it's called, like, just Stardust Ender Dragon, where if you draw it, you win. Mm. And he went, that's still not as good as Pot Agreed because it's just draw two cards. And uh, I'm going to beat the shit out of this fucker right here. It's always better to go second because you can't attack on your first turn. All right, fucking, that's great. 
What? What does Pot of Greed allow you to do? Sorry. I draw two cards. <laughs> I play the magic card Pot of Greed. It allows me to draw two cards from my deck. And that's the, yeah, that's the thing. But that's one of the most broken cards in the entire game. Is Pot of Greed. It's just draw two cards without any um. I, that's like a, a it, downside. It becomes more and more powerful over time because of just how simple it is, and it's like to the point where I think it's banned. Yeah, some competition just outright ban it because it's too powerful. It's too powerful to draw two cards. <laughs> it's like, you know, you can have a paragraph of text mm -hmm. that is super specific and does one really broken thing, but that broken thing is hyper-specific or know, has drawbacks. Scenario, it interacts in very specific ways with the cards, whereas Pot Agree, draw two cards. It's like that weird thing, isn't it, of some of the early cards had to be renamed because the way that they were named made it so that they didn't actually work with the other cards the that were in their yeah. set. Because mm -hmm. like you have like the Blue Eyes archetype, for example. It's like any card that had the word Blue Eyes in its name, but there were cards that were supposed to be part of that archetype that didn't have the right word on there. It's like, it's all done. And it's like, because they've never said, fuck it, start again. Just release like a legacy format, for example. So no, all, everything is valid. So it's all broken. And like to the point where you have tournaments where it's just, okay, first turn, the guys go, I win. And I know there is the speed duels format as well, mm -hmm. um, but the the main type of way of playing Yu-Gi-Oh still is the same. It's like they've added the the speed dueling format, but they've not, as you say, had a hard reset at any point. Which they desperately, desperately need. Because I, I think, what point for you was it where you just went, fuck this? Because I think for me, it's Pendulum Monsters. Well, I played someone with a Pendulum deck, and the first thing you did is like, first thing you get to think, what, what, what's the Pendulum Zone? <laughs> Didn't explain it to me. He went, oh, it's the pendulum zone. Like, you're going, no, no, it's too high. I don't want to explain it to you. And the first thing he did is put his two pendulum monsters down and had an entire field of five cards. And you're like, uh, first turn. Uh, what just that just happened? Went, what? Yeah, I he said remember. five monsters straight away. Pendulum summon! P -p -p pendulum I will now place two monsters in my pendulum zone and I can summon five monsters at once! WHAT THE fuck? Yep. For me, it w was not even pendulums. Like, I think it was earlier than that when just... Was it Synchro? It, it was around the time that they had Exesis, I think. Or however you pronounce that. The XYZ thing. And I went to like a... Not tournament tournament, just like a casual like... You know, play some Yu-Gi-Oh. Have a drink. Play some Yu-Gi-Oh in a card shop, and they were, they were just doing some like friendlies and stuff. And the person I sat down with, I didn't know, uh, and just like again, it was like turn one, just churn through their entire deck. Well, I I activate this, 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 which lets me do this, this, this. Like I didn't even have a chance to know what any of the cards actually mm -hmm. said. Not I. I just there with my like harpy deck with a few like they they buffed the harpy archetype over time and I had a few mm -hmm. decent options and stuff and I didn't have a full set but I had a mostly full set and was quite proud of it and was like I'm gonna take all these new harpy cards and see what it does and like I didn't get to play a card. I play harpy lady in attack mode. And it's just it's fundamentally unfun. It's not fun at all. No. Nope. But the people who play it, it's fun for them because they get to win. But, you know, speaking of playing to win, we have here, you know, the basic biographical information for Joey Wheeler. And we have birth, January 25th, age, 16 at the start of the story, height, uh, 5 foot 10, weight, 62 kilos, gender male, blood type B, favourite food, steak and shrimp, and then curry rice. So surf and surf and Korean rice. And he's pretty pretty basic bitch. Yeah. He's and Joey. Then we have uh, his relatives. Serenity. I never forget that Joey Wheeler is literally playing for his sister's eyes. I forgot about that. Did you forget about that thing where he's like, his sister hasn't got eyes? <laughs> I forgot. For some reason, there's a surgery that can fix eyes, and he needs to win the Duel Masters tournament <laughs> to get his sister some eyes. And Kaiba makes fun of him for his sister being blind. And anyone who's late for registration will be disqualified. Mokuba, make sure Wheeler's late. <laughs> Because he's like, oh, why would you duel for somebody else? You duel only for power! And it's like, I mean, calm down, Kaiba. Calm spoken down. like a true billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> thing is, I, know, I don't want to keep... I don't want to talk about Kaiba too much. We've already done an episode <laughs> on him, but... Just, I love how much he hates Joey. Mm. I, 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 I low-key adore how much Kaiba hates Joey. Because Joey relies entirely on luck. 
<laughs> and it's the thing is it's like you know flip a coin like what is it time wizard flip a coin if yeah. you win all the cards on your opponent's side of the field get destroyed and it's like well that's a hell of a risk to take isn't it 50 50 you might lose the game but in a game where as we talked about you can lose first turn 50 mm -hmm. 50 sounds pretty good yeah and like i can't remember the exact effect of time wizard but it is like yeah if you you get heads your opponent's fucked if you get tails you you're fucked or whatever like completely mm -hmm. just it, the amount of times it's like Joey just in the anime is like, well, I've got one shot left and it's Time Wizard and I'm going to flip a coin and see who wins. Well, that's the thing. If, you, if you're facing down a guaranteed loss or 50-50, that's yeah. pretty good odds. Like, getting yep. the odds to 50-50 is really good in, like, you know, organized competition. Only one card can save me. Yeah! Jackpot! Read it and weep! It's like, you know, someone sits there churns through 30 cards someone's like five different blue eyes ultimate dragon archetype like mess monsters and just like oh yeah time wizard let's see yeah. what happens what's the thing i like uh, i love when there's like mo things like that in games like I, I think it was a magic card that was like a joke one but because it was still legal in some places it was like really broken i think it was you rip up the card and you throw it on the table <laughs> and, like everything yeah. it touches gets affected by that i think <laughs> something stupid like that yeah oh, it was like a magic card that forces your opponent to shake your hand and if they don't shake your hand you get something so what people were doing is like spitting in their hand and oh playing that card. no of course and i think they had to were. stop i, I want to say I'm, I'm half remembering this i'll try and double check yeah. it when i do the edit but there was like a card like you have to shake your opponent's hand or something mm -hmm. and someone just read that and went well that means i can do this but appearance remember what he looks like uh you know he's he's pretty generic looking considering the world of Yu-Gi-Oh. What's all the anime went into Yu-Gi-Oh's design, let's be honest. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you're my hero, Yu-Gi. So what's your secret? The budget went into Yu-Gi's hair. And like his friends, by comparison, are pretty generic anime designs. Like, Joey's mm. got the blonde hair. Like, I think the only one that's kind of interesting is Tristan, because he has the flat top. Yeah, but all all three of them kind of just are regular-looking people. And then they just don't have any got this five foot tall dude with a starfish on his head. Yeah, they don't have any real descriptors other than like the what the dude with brown hair, the dude yeah. with blonde hair. So there's not really much to talk about there. We have their personality. Joey started out as a bully, but became friends with Yugi Moto, and uh, this changes him. He can seem gullible, sarcastic, impulsive, and occasionally cocky, but he's also heroic, loyal, bold, kind hearted, caring, good natured, funny, brave, selfless, and loving. Though portrayed as comic relief, he's essential to the plot of the series' overall themes. He's an enthusiastic duelist who firmly believes that dueling is about fighting to help people you love. And, you know, you bring up, like, you mentioned Cocky, and how many times is he like, Yeah, I'm the greatest duelist of all time. Oh no, Yugi, help me! Well, that's usually how he gets his, like, comeuppance, isn't it? When he's mm -hmm. like, he'll get a new strong card and get his shit pushed in, and then he has to realise it's not about strong cards. It's about believing in the weak cards that you have. So, goodbye, baby dragon. Hello, thousand dragon. But I love as well, it's like red eyes, black dragon becomes his card. It's like, oh, it can it can rival the blue eyes. It's like, well, not really, no, because it stats are 2,400 attack points. <laughs> Instead of 3,000. Which means just on pay for its worth. It's like, I never understood how. In like, you know, do you remember those first two initial decks they did of like the Yugi deck and the uh, Seto deck? Mm -hmm. And Yugi's like card is the Dark Magician. Mm -hmm. But Dark Magician is just numerically weaker than yeah. Blue Eyes White Dragon. Like, and they didn't have win. they didn't have all of the extra stuff to like really buff the Dark Magician deck yeah. and the archetype at that point. So like it was just oh well I can't really beat you. There was no card, or there was no way with that initial like legacy Yugi deck to make your Dark Magician strong enough to beat a Blue Eyes White Dragon. I think even with like the equipped card it came with, it only gave it like 300 extra attack. But then or remember that there was also equipped cards for the Blue Eyes White Dragon as well, like Dragon mm -hmm. Treasure and stuff. But either way, um, it says here that uh, Joey cares deeply for his younger sister, Serenity Wheeler, which uh, makes him similar in some ways to Seto Kaiba. He's extremely protective of her, which shows why he wants sacrificing his own life to ensure her safety. Fair play. He often gets freaked out or offended easily, responding rather impulsively to insults, especially remarks about his outward appearance, which is hair or his outfit. Hey, mate, I get that. I feel ya. He has got just, like, the the block of hair on top of his head, hasn't he? Like, yeah. 
it says that um, uh, his du um, especially when he's talking about his dueling skills, this means he can be easily tricked or um, goaded into making uh, un efficient moves, such as when he attacks someone who had four trap cards. <laughs> <laughs> thing is, I know for what you never attack someone with a face down card. Not four, that's for yeah. sure. Attack! <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? I prepared a special surprise. The power of my mirror force trap card. Hold your fire! And oh. voice and mannerisms. So in the Japanese version, Joey does not use honorifics, uh, which means he is like, you know, a rude speech pattern, quote unquote. Right. Um, so specifically when he's talking to people he doesn't like, uh, he will use the word teme, a rude form of you in Japanese, often translated in uh, English translations to you bastard, instead of a more normal omae, a form of you that in context is used between friends, but it can imply that the person who's been spoken to has a lower status than the speaker if used incorrectly, especially to Seto Kaiba, who does not think highly of Joey. Is that why Vegeta says bastard all the time to people? Yeah. <laughs> is, is that why? Because it's like the rude way of saying you is like translated to bastard, so that's why yeah. Vegeta's constantly it saying says it. That, uh, this, speech this speech pattern is translated somewhat into the dub, and is represented by Joey, voiced by Wayne Grayson, speaking with a Brooklyn accent. So he's speaking with, like, you know, a, a broader, more mm. working class accent. I know, yeah. like, you know, quite brusque people. I don't, I don't want to like stereotype people from Brooklyn, but when you think of like the Brooklyn accent, quite brusque, quite um, uh, like impertinent to the point, but straightforward. Well, I mean, let's not forget that the English one was a four kids show, so. They stereotype the hell out of a Brooklyn accent. They, they go indeed, so yes. hard. Like that? You know, the way I took your favorite card from you? It looks good standing here behind me, doesn't it? Wheeler. It's, it's nice to know that even though, you know, it's a pretty, you know, the, the dub's not great. It is at least in some way um, uh, like representative of what the intention was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Joey's like, you know, he's quite rude and to the point. So we give him a Brooklyn accent. And again, that's not us saying that Brooklyn people are, but it's playing up to like a stereotype. Yeah, and it says his contempt for Kaiba in the dub is symbolized by calling him a rich boy instead of mm. using like the um, uh, the Japanese, like, you know, more subtle way of insulting by <laughs> using the way of referring to a friend when he's not really a mate. Mm. Which I guess you can do in like English. You can be like, if I call someone mate sarcastically, it's like, mm. all right, mate. Huh. In the European Spanish dubbing, um, uh, he lacks the Brooklyn accent, but he, he does call Kaiba. Um, Richon, which is uh, like apparently, um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it means very rich guy. He also tends to call people he doesn't like cerdos or pigs. Huh? And he often seems to say matcha es ese cerdo yugi, uh, which again I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, which translates to crush that pig. Oh <laughs> god. Um, he often, when he makes moves or draws the cards he needs, says tomaya, which is booyah or alright. And mm -hmm. is like booyah the greatest exclamation? <laughs> and why do cyborgs booyah always hit so fucking hard? I'm like, booyah! All right, I'm only gonna say this once. Booyah! And I'm so glad that they got that booyah in Injustice. Oh yeah, that's thing. It's a uh, Karen Payton, I think it is, who does like ty um, cyborg in Teen Titans, mm -hmm. and they give him the booyah, not as like as aggressively or as like loudly, but he does say booyah in between um, uh, matches sometimes. <laughs> Did you ever see that thing with like the guy who plays Cyborg in the um, uh, the Justice League movie? They mm. told him you have to say booyah. He's like, "Why? Well, it's your character's catchphrase." Mm -hmm. Like your character says, it's like Batman saying, "I'm Batman." Like it's your catchphrase, and he was so mad he only said it while he was pissed off, and he refused to do a better take, which is why in the movie he just goes under his breath, "Booyah." Booyah. Great. Instead of like you know Teen Titans stuff like. Booyah! Yeah. Oh, dear. Let's forget about that movie. Like, imagine being so up your own ass, like, you don't even want to pay homage to the reason your character is known to 90% of people watching the movie. Mm-hmm. And then, like, do you care about his biography at all? Ah, no. It's relationships, like, just up Yugi's ass. Okay, so relationships, Yugi Moto. Joey and Tristan used to bully Yugi, but after Yugi defended Joey and Tristan, um, Joey and Yugi became very close friends. When Yagi, uh, when when Yami Yugi was unable to snap Joey out of Marek's brainwashing, Yugi took over. Yami Yugi conceded that Yugi was closer to Joey than he ever was. Well, yeah, he's his mate. Of course, like the weird pharaoh that lives in Yugi's mind. And I always like they must 
when he transforms, say for example, into like Yami Yugi, mm-hmm. it it is just like a visual representation for the audience. Yes, right. So we've talked about this before. Yeah, where there's a, a people wonder like why does Yugi get taller when he becomes Yami Yugi? And it's like no, he, he doesn't physically change. It's just like he carries himself with more confidence. So rather than like you know being all slouched and like you know. Just very Timid. agreeable. Like he stands mm-hmm. straight, he stands tall, and he looks the person he likes. And they visually showcase that by usually filming from a slightly lower angle to mm. make him look more imposing. There's a rep, like a visual representation of his change in um, character, but he doesn't physically like... grow now. He needs us. What should we do? We have no choice. We have to duel. All right. <laughs> Transforms for the audience's sake, so we know which version of Yugi's in charge. Yeah. But like to Joey, Yugi doesn't become three foot taller. No, his voice changes though, and he's like his demeanor does, and his demeanor mm-hmm. makes him appear to be taller. Which is like, it's just visual storytelling. Yeah. Then we have yeah. Yami Yugi. Joey is close friends with Yami Yugi, and each risks the, uh, their lives to help each other countless times. Um, in battle. Uh, oh, sorry. In Battle City, Joey calls Yami Yugi the true duelist and makes it his goal to become a duelist worthy of dueling him. The Pharaoh. The Pharaoh of games! Oh. Uh, and just, you know, maybe Joey might build a decent deck if you're going to aspire to be Yami Yugi. Is, though, you don't need to build a decent <laughs> deck if you're just going to flip a coin. It's like you're at that point where, <laughs> fuck it. You know what, like, you're finally, so the Seto Kaiba relationship. The series start, Joey and Seto dislike each other, neither showing any real respect for the other. In particular, Joey dislikes Seto's arrogant behavior, and Seto considers Joey a weak duelist. Yeah. However, over the course of the series, each individual shows concern, empathy, and or respect for the other several times. Like, there's that begrudging respect, though, in it, like, I guess you're pretty good. Yeah, you start to bond when your enemy becomes, like, this ancient pharaoh that's trying to like destroy the world with god cards and shit it's like yeah hey hold it a sec kaiba don't you think the very least you could do is say thank you or something i never asked for your help and as far as i'm concerned i never needed it in my head it's just that like it's that thing of like seto doesn't want to admit he's got friends it's yes. that simple to me like just kaiba doesn't want to admit he's got friends i like he likes hanging out with those guys you know mentioning the character again like the vegeta like that yeah I'm gonna just I'm gonna hang around with you guys all of the time, but I'm never gonna admit that we're friends with one another. It's like the yeah, anti-hero. It's, like, it's, it's just a coincidence that I happen to be in the same location as you, 99 percent of the time. <laughs> Here we have uh, Joey Wheeler's deck. So, what do you consider to be like the signature card of Joey's deck? Then, I mean, so for the most part, uh, I mean, there's Time Wizard and Thousand Dragon that I think of a lot, but for the most part, I think of Red Eyes, Black Dragon. Yeah, cause that, which is the card that he gets from Rex Raptor, as he says here. But for me, it's mm-hmm. like Time Wizard slash Baby Dragon. So I just love like, Baby Dragon! And everyone's making fun of Baby Dragon. And it's like, yeah, but when you fast forward a thousand years, Baby Dragon is Ancient Dragon! All right! It's Time Warp time! Baby Dragon Ancient Dragon! But I love the, the fact that, like, yeah, even Thousand Dragon is still weak. Still weak as shit, and it's like it's weaker than just a blue eyes. It's it's weaker than someone Scott. Yeah, yeah. So to explain what we mean by that, in Yu-Gi-Oh, like the general rule of thumb is, at least as I understand it, the last time I checked, is you monsters have like one to ten stars, I think it is, and any four star monster can be summoned just on its own. Any monster that is four, uh, five, or six stars, um, you have to sacrifice one more monster. To summon mm-hmm. them, so you have like you know four star monster. You sacrifice that, summon a five or six star monster, and generally they're stronger or have like good effects to counteract that. And then mm-hmm. you have seven star monsters and above, which require two monsters to be. Um, uh, like I believe sacrificed. nine and above is three. Three, but obviously that doesn't really matter in the newer one. Where it's like fuck it, you can summon whatever you want. But that's the general rule of thumb. And the dark magician is a seven star monster has twenty five hundred attack points. Summon skull is a six star monster and has 2,500 attack points, which means that just on paper, Summon Skull is just better because it requires one less monster on the field to summon and has the same attack power as Dark Magician. The trade back being it has less defense. But that doesn't matter because you're never going to summon that shit in defense anyway. Not not particularly. That's not the strategy with that card, no. Yeah, um, and for comparison's sake, Thousand Dragon 
has a 2400 attack, as does um, Red Eyes Black Dragon. Mm -hmm. But both of them uh, require very specific ways to be summoned, at least in the base game that we played, not the one in the series. Uh, where a uh, thousand dragon is a fusion monster that requires you to have a baby dragon and a time wizard and you need to have polymerization so you need three cards to summon that the difficult to have in your hand at any one time uh, the advantage being that you can do that from your hand without any monsters on the field mm -hmm. but you, you still need to have three separate cards in your hand at once mm -hmm. and a red eyes dragon you need to have two cards on the field that you can sacrifice at that time whereas summon skull one monster done 2500 attacks, so yeah. stronger than 1000 Dragon. And it's like, then in the anime where Joey's like, because the rules of the the anime version aren't quite it's the same as ours, it's episode, like, yeah. isn't it like that the Time Wizard needs to like get the, the coin flip correct while Baby Dragon's out to age Baby Dragon up or yeah. something like that? Either way, like, never, like, we always bring it up, but in Yu Gi Oh! it's just where they shoot fucking Gaia the Fierce Knight riding Curse of Dragon at. Castle of Dark Illusion and it falls on all that guy's monsters. It's like, I want that. Where's that game? Turtle, catapult, launch my dragon champion! It's like, catapult turtle shoots another card into the castle so that the castle can crush all the other monsters below it. It's like, Okay, cool. Yeah, that sounds rad. I still love though. There was like one of a series where it's like you got to have your signature monster, and like Yugi's like, "Well, Dark Magician, Dark Magician's my he's my boy." And then like he hears in his head like the deck starts talking to him. He's like, "My deck is telling me something. I have to pick Karibo." Karibo. Interesting choice. Uh, hold on, I didn't choose him. Uh, uh, sorry. The rules state once a deck master has chosen, it cannot be changed. Great. <laughs> so he picks Karibo, and Karibo's fucking OP as shit in that version of the anime. Yeah. And everyone like makes fun of him, like, why are you picking Karibo? It's like, Karibo's like, broken OP. And, you know, let, let's just mention that, like, yeah, Yugi's Millennium Puzzle means that just he, he manipulates... He manipulates, he manipulates like probability and just cheats and gets the guard he needs. Like realistically, Yugi should play with Joey's deck. He'd be unstoppable. <laughs> yeah, true. But we say that uh, in Battle City, the Joey's deck is more balanced than it was initially because he just relied on having like you know strong monsters. Mm -hmm. And he relies on warriors um, and incorporates gambling cards that are like coin flips, dice rolls, and other games of chance and luck, such as graceful dice and skull dice. Um, oh, the yeah. monster cards that come to define his deck include Alligator Sword, the Swordsman of Landstar, Panther Warrior. And the magic cards Scapegoat and Giant True Nade. After he defeats the opponents. Oh, sorry. As he defeats opponents, he adds Jinzo, Insect Queen, and the Legendary Fisherman to his deck. And Jinzo might be one of the most the, the best cards. Have you seen that like Jinzo is still fucking top tier? Yeah, because Jinzo, for anyone what? that doesn't know, when Jinzo is on the field, no trap cards can be activated on either yeah. side. Just trap cards don't exist while Jinzo does. I sacrificed Panther Warrior so I can summon this! My own Jinzo! Your Jinzo may not cooperate, but mine definitely will! And it's one of those examples of like, initially that was a pretty strong card, but in a meta where you can have entire decks built from trap cards. <laughs> Just having a Jinzo on the field of like, okay, now no trap cards work. Yeah. And that's like, you know, because it has such a broad, wide region effect. They never anticipated that, that eventually you'd have trap cards that could be played from the hand that double as monsters. Mm -hmm. example, which is a thing you can get. Oh god, yeah, Jin Jinzo is another one of those of like it's so simple, it's so effective. Yeah, that's why it's good. Yeah, it's so good because its effect is just trap cards don't work, and because that mm -hmm. effect is so broad, like its interpretation is really nebulous. So you can apply it to virtually any scenario, and as a result, it's so it's like Manita Bug, like my card that I my favorite card <laughs> is Manita Bug, which again is super fucking broken OP. In like the the further along, the more power creep there is, just destroying one card becomes way more powerful. Yeah, because you know if they spend a half a turn and twenty cards to summon their final four monster, and then you just got a man eat your bug on the field, like my man eat your bug. That's the joke I always make is like you know if I'd have been there at the dawn of creation, and God said let there be light, and I had man eat your bug, <laughs> I win. It's like God's like let there be light. No man, man eat your bug. 
it's the best. And you know, it's when we've got a minute or so. So thank you everyone for um, you know watching. Like, let us know what your favourite Yu-Gi-Oh card is in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that nonsense. But Lucas, what's like your favourite moment from the Yu-Gi-Oh anime? I can put a clip of him. Oh, you, you've rumbled me on this one. Have you got yeah, one? So I've talked about a few of mine. Like the um, just all there's going to be plenty of Joey clips going in. But do you have a favourite? Just put a clip in of the Dungeon Dice Monsters game. <laughs> Just, just one, just one clip of Dungeon Dice Monsters. <laughs> I'll use those two magic crests to activate another special ability. My Dark Magician's Mystic Box. Your warp vortex inspired me to find an alternative path to your side of the field. <laughs> I'll never forget when a mutual friend of ours, or like. <laughs> when we were playing Smash Bros, randomly just said, oh, yes, this will increase my crest pool. <laughs> and we just lost our shit. Because we all went, was that a Dungeon Dice Monsters <laughs> reference? And we, just, we lost our fucking shit. I'm like, God, Dungeon Dice Monsters suck so much ass. Uh, God, I'm glad they kept it to the card game. Cheers, everybody.